Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'm happy to rise in a lively debate here on Friday on Bill C-50, which would be changes to Canada's Elections Act and is premised upon uh, political fundraising. Um, but as my good friend and colleague from Calgary Shepherd phrased it, this really is a Seinfeldian <laughs> bill about nothing because it came as a result of inappropriate conduct by this government with respect to cash for access fundraiser literally within minutes of forming government. And I'm going to speak for a few minutes on why that may seem astonishing to many people since the Liberals have been out of power for a decade. But if you look at the people involved, you'll see this is their modus operandi, Mr. Speaker, cash for access. And no wonder the Prime Minister and many ministers hit the ground running after their election on hashtag real change, Mr. Speaker. Um, essentially, a, a read of this bill would really result like, what are the changes here? Well, I guess it means that before hosting an event, somewhere in a prominent place on the internet, uh, the event must be published. So is that truly earth shattering, Mr. Speaker? That, you know, there's a few other uh, elements about what needs to be reported and what's being uh, disclosed, but that seems to be the main thrust, is now buried on page eight of the hashtag real change website, there's information on the, the event, Mr. Speaker. But clearly, the way the Prime Minister structured his affairs is they had these fundraisers happening almost right away. We've seen pictures of them, Mr. Speaker, where the Prime Minister of Canada was help hosting or even preparing a meal for Chinese billionaires, Mr. Speaker. And it really caused some questions very early in this parliament because some of the same interests that helped organize or attend those fundraisers were also part of the Trudeau Foundation, named after the late Prime Minister, the, the first one, Mr. Speaker, so I think I'm safe saying that. And there was some suggestion, because this Liberal government at first cancelled the monument to the Afghanistan war, there was a suggestion that because of that Chinese support for the Trudeau Foundation, that a, true, a, a statue to Pierre Trudeau would be built before a monument to our veterans from Afghanistan, Mr. Speaker. It's shameful. I'm glad they then, after outrage, came forward with some sort of proposal, but they cancelled something I had announced as Veterans Minister, Mr. Speaker, location, as well as another monument to our Victoria Cross winners. They cancelled that as well, Mr. Speaker. But that was a series of events the Prime Minister and other ministers had replicating this cash for access for insiders, including some that had links with groups like Canada 2020, which I'm sure there's wonderful people on that organization. I like to describe it as what do the, the students from Queens do that are on the Queens Liberal Campus Club? What do they do when they graduate? They join Canada 2020, Mr. Speaker. And now they run events in conjunction with the Prime Minister's office, exclusive access, and I think an inappropriate connection between the Prime Minister and that front group. They, we also see influence being, being uh, extended through a number of these intimate cash for access dinners that the Prime Minister engaged with. And why are we not surprised by this conduct? Despite language about being open and accountable and in the, in the Liberal election platform and in his note to his own ministers, on accountability and being clear from even the perception of conflict of interest. The people running this Prime Minister's office during their years at Queen's Park and in and around Ontario politics set up the most elaborate cash for access scheme that Canadian politics has ever seen throughout the governments of Dalton McGuinty and Kathleen Wynne. There was a machine providing access for cash. And I'll, I'll quote a few details from that contained in a great Globe and Mail article that I would suggest some members of the Liberal Caucus peruse, because I know they're already having concerns about the direction some of the mines in the PMO are, are forging, Mr. Speaker. The Globe and Mail reports that there were 159 intimate cash for access fundraisers 
with Premier Wynne just in a few years, Mr. Speaker, with no disclosure ahead or confirmation of who attended. Three of them were for $10,000 a ticket, Mr. Speaker. They raised in that period $20 million from the Cash for Access machine. Well, as we know from the first few weeks of debate in this House, Mr. Speaker, Canadian taxpayers paid to move that machine from Toronto to Ottawa to run the Prime Minister's office, and within weeks, he was attending these same styled, intimate cash for access dinners, Mr. Speaker. And it really took outrage from this House of Commons and from Canadians for him to stop that, put a note on the website or advertise it, and those elements of their public relations campaign led to Bill C-50. But I think we have to look at what is expected when we talk about transparency and accountability, Mr. Speaker. Because this government tosses those words around so cavalierly, but let's look at the record. There's a report from the Ethics Commissioner in the name of the Prime Minister. This time I can't mention the name, Mr. Speaker. When I mentioned the Trudeau Foundation, I could. But this time I can't mention the name of the report because it refers to this Prime Minister, not the previous one. I'm being very careful, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, yeah. But her report reveals that the Prime Minister accepted a luxury gift from someone he casually knew 30 years prior. Mr. Speaker. He describes him now as a friend, but I'm 45. If I hadn't talked to a friend in 30 years, I might say I went to school with that person. We're not BFFs, Mr. Speaker. I'm not sure if the Prime Minister is Facebook friends, maybe, with the Aga Khan, but I don't see that a 30-year casual interaction at a funeral justifies a family friendship, Mr. Speaker. What was more scary in that report was actually the fact that the Prime Minister doesn't feel it's important because he's almost a ceremonial figure for the country, Mr. Speaker. That's ludicrous. At the same time, the organization, the good organization run by the owner of that private island, was lobbying the government for continued support for their programs. And they're good programs, Mr. Speaker. But that's directly the violations of the Act. And the Ethics Commissioner said four times. That's the first report in the Prime Minister's name. There's another one coming on lobbying, Mr. Speaker, from the cash for access dinners I referenced at the beginning of my speech. When we're talking about the perception of a conflict of interest, because conflict of interest for Canadians following this debate, there can be a real conflict of interest or the perception, which is why the Prime Minister in his mandate letters, which he made fanfare about releasing, but now ignores them routinely, says that ministers are supposed to be beyond even the appearance of conflict. <coughs> While we see the finance minister, who prior to running was publicly making advocacy speeches to change pension legislation in Canada, Mr. Speaker, has a large interest in a company that advises on making those changes, Mr. Speaker, and then introduces a bill in Parliament <laughs> to do that knowing full well that, at the very least, there would be a perception of a conflict of interest, maybe? Am I being unreasonable here? No, I'm not, Mr. Speaker. I know the finance minister is an honourable man. He made a big mistake, and he should express that and likely stay back. He should probably, as an honourable member of this House, step aside until the report on that bill is complete. That would live up to the lofty goals contained in the mandate letters of the Prime Minister. But why should he do that, Mr. Speaker, when the Prime Minister has more investigations about him and refuses to account for the hundreds of thousands of dollars spent on an illegal trip? He's sending quite a signal to his caucus, Mr. Speaker. I wrote this in your mandate letter, but if you're following leadership by example, my example is to not be accountable. So we can have Bill C-50, we can have a ton of things in this House, Mr. Speaker, but if they're not making decisions in the nation's interest that show that they're clear from even the perception of conflict of interest, if they're not showing they're willing to take leadership and own up to mistakes, repay money, step away from important portfolios while investigations are pending, the language and mandate letters, Mr. Speaker, is useless. It's just words.
So I want to hear some accountability from these members, and we don't want Canadians to see the cash for access scheme that led to 15 years of corruption and incompetence in Ontario. Here, here.